Yo dudes! Uh, welcome! So as you'll see, David has transformed into Handsome Owen. Thank Handsome you Owen much. is from Real Men Bake Bread. He's a pro baker, fantastic, excellent, and uh, all done with the kind of healthier baking uh, options. Well, I am now anyway, after yes. you guys, you know. Uh, so what we're gonna, what Owen's gonna show us today is how to make an enriched dough. This is an enriched sweet dough that has so many functions. This dough mm -hmm. could be used for 20 applications. Today we're gonna make... We're gonna make uh, a chocolate loaf, and we're gonna make uh, like a tear and share. Beautiful. Fruit, fruit and nut round. Beautiful. And the dough is 100% wholemeal dough. Yeah, it's vegan. Perfect. And it could also be used to make pizza bases, to make a savory croissant. Yeah. Uh, but there's so many fa functions to it and it's very simple, so let's get started. So we're gonna start off, we're gonna take our 500 grams of 100% wholemeal spell flour. Yeah, or wholemeal flour. You could use whatever type of flour. Ideally, if you can use wholemeal, it's just gonna have a higher fiber content, gonna have more nutrition in it. Uh, if you wanna make it gluten-free, use buckwheat flour. Yeah. Um, Ooh, and again, we're doing this in a mixer, but you could easily do this by hand. Yeah, and you're all, if you're mixing it by hand, just bring all the dry ingredients together, adding the wet, and just working that dough till the gluten develops. Yes! Next, we're gonna add our salt. So we're adding five grams of salt. So 500 gram of wholemeal flour, we're using five grams of salt. We're using 50 grams of maple, maple syrup. syrup. Yeah, if, you could use sugar if you don't have maple syrup, any, any sort of sweetener. We are using almond, 500 gra or 300 grams of almond milk. 300 grams of almond milk, or any other alternative milk that you're into would work perfect. And then lastly, we're adding our yeast. So we're using a fresh yeast instead of a commercial dry yeast. Beautiful. Why it's better, um, anything fresh is better. Basically. Beautiful, I love it. Uh, so if you're, there's 15 grams of fresh yeast. If you can't get your hands on fresh yeast, seven grams of dry yeah, will do the exactly, part. Yeah, exactly, yeah, pop it down. Beautiful. We're gonna mix this dough here for one minute at a medium speed, slowly working to a fast speed for two minutes, so three minutes in total. Or some sometimes are different, so we're gonna literally mix it till it comes clean from the bowl. Yeah, so the main thing you're looking for is that it, like literally the dough just comes off the bowl. Mm -hmm. uh, and if you're doing this by hand, literally just work it until it starts coming together and you develop gluten, it has that lovely elasticity. And the shine off, it's very yeah. good, you can tell the shine. The shine. Yeah, shine. You want a shiny dough. <laughs> shine your dough, folks. <laughs> And see, it will never go, it will always just come clean now, you know. Look at that, so it really comes off. Like, look at the development, look, look at this, look how clean it comes off, look. Ooh! So literally you're developing until it has that lovely shine and bounce to it. Like, this is a beautiful dough. Um, so we're gonna leave this dough to proof for one uh, hour, isn't it? Yeah, one hour depending on temperature is where it is in the house or it's not. You want it to pretty much double in size. Yeah. And if you are, you, you don't have an hour and you, you could mix it together in the morning, leave it in the fridge to proof, you yeah. can come back ne the next day, that evening. Literally all you're looking for is the dough to double inside and give that time to ferment for that yeast to create that volume and that yeah. lightness for our dough. Yeah. Adding it in the fridge also, what it will do is it slows the process down. We like, even though it's a sweet dough, it's a quick dough, we're looking at the long, healthier option. So it can go in the fridge. Yeah. The longer you leave it to ferment, the more it's gonna be easier to digest. Dough has been left proof for an hour. It has doubled in size. So what you're looking for is where it starts to develop kind of slight bubbles. But the main indicator is that it's doubled in size. Yeah, doubled in size. So we're gonna rush straight into it. Oh, I like the way you do that. And who? Oh, look wanna at go? that. Ooh. Do you wanna go? Okay, yeah, just, to, just to show, look. Okay, you ready? I used to play a lot of tennis. Nice, I'm not nice. as good as you, no, you got a better. You're you go. better, you're better, okay, cool. Uh, so we're gonna pour out our dough. And as you can see as well, is always an indication to, when you're looking at your dough, is that it has doubled in size, lots of air in it. We're simply just gonna, Sort of like a, it's, it's a great dough because there's no fuss. Yeah. It's just simple, mix it, let it proof, and all we're gonna do is simply pin it out. So pin it, you mean just roll it Hit out? Hit it with a rolling pin. Hit yeah. it with a rolling pin. Hit it with a rolling pin. Okay, first up what we're gonna make is we are making a chocolate hazelnut swirl loaf. Uh, so we've taken 200 grams of dark chocolate. Uh, so we've pinned out our dough, just smear it on. Yeah, smear it on. All, all over. All of it. Wow. A couple of little tips, don't go too close to the edge on it, um, otherwise you're just gonna, it's gonna make a mess really, really easy. And then we're, we, we love hazelnuts, we love nuts, so we're going the uh, dark chocolate, roasted hazelnut. Yeah. Oh, oh, that's absolutely magnificent, isn't it? So simple, we're just gonna take the edge. We're looking for our first tuck, probably the most important of the whole thing, is nice and tight. And once the first one's nice, Mr. Flynn. Right, okay, we come and literally roll it together. it's just simple. poly Yeah. Oh, this is very lovely. Come to the edge, there you go. Beautiful. Okay, okay, so we've taken a two pound loaf tin and we've just lined it with baking parchment. Now it's time to cut it open for... So um, quite simple. Use your, everyone's tin's gonna be different, so let's use this as a guide. Cut it straight in the middle. Very cool. Opens up. Nice. Okay, yeah. where are we at now? This. So always the tops this side up. Oh, that's beautiful. Same here. Okay, and turn the chocolate. Simples. Yeah. Now. 
Lift the tin up. That's fabulous. Now. Oh, look at that. That is beautiful. We have a little bit of leftover dough here. We're simply just going to do some individual, as we call these, uh, baker's bites. Okay, so these, these are these for the guys who've worked hard. So these are going to end up like cinnamon swirls, but in this case, they're obviously not cinnamon. They're going to be a chocolate hazelnut swirl. Yeah. So perfect. Okay, we preheated the oven to 200 degrees. We're going to leave these to rise on top of it. So mm. it's literally... Yeah, 20 minutes. 20 yeah. minutes. You'll, and they'll just literally just fill out the tray here. These will kind of just open yeah. up slightly more. Uh, and then we're going to bake it in the oven. How long? Uh, these bake for about, the small ones, about 16 minutes, this about 22 minutes. We're looking for 80% to double in size here and 20 in the oven. Okay, the second thing we're gonna show you is just another variation of the same dough. So again, we've taken our dough. Owen's gonna do that sexy, no, the se se what do you call it? Sexy throw. Just Ooh, <laughs> dough down. Yeah, this is the knockback stage of the dough, so we're simply just knocking it back whilst shaping it. So quite simply, like we did before, wow. bit of Pinner. flour to stop Pinner. it sticking. We got it here. Nice. Mr. Flynn. Oh, Mr. Flynn, there we go, the pinning, pinning machine. Okay, great. Okay, cool. So we've, all we're literally doing is uh, pinning it, I believe is the technical term, pin it into rectangle. Rectangle, yeah. Beautiful. Simply we're gonna pick uh, our fruit. Today we're gonna use some uh, golden sultanas, some cranberries, some hazelnut, some almonds. You can pretty much use whatever you like. So we're using dried fruit just that it's easier in terms of baking, it's gonna hold its, its form better. We got some toasted hazelnuts. Why I'm gonna not? put a few flaked almonds just in the inside, just for mm. an extra bit of bite. Yeah. And again, we're going back to the start. Simple, most important roll is your first roll. Same technique. Great. Same technique, does it all. Okay, so this is again the same dough. This is the dough to rule them all. We have a tray. So we've taken a baking tray. We've just lined it with a baking parchment to stop her sticking. Yeah. And all we're looking to do is... Unite it. Bring Unite it together. the dough. That's beautiful, isn't it? And we're just going to decorate it with a few um, flaked almonds. And that Beautiful. is us. Beauty. 30 minutes on top of the oven. In the oven for anywhere from 22 to 26, depending on your oven. Okay, 200 degrees? Yeah, 200 okay, degrees. Okay, cool. So leave approved 20 minutes. Yep. Yeah. Bake 22 to 26 minutes. Yeah. 200 degrees. Beauty. So they're out of the oven. They smell fantastic. There's yeah. such a wonderful aroma. Um, we're going to just pimp them up, show you top ways of just taking a, a really good baked product into something that's exceptional. Next level. Next level. Okay, first step, we got some powdered xylitol. We just took some xylitol and blended it up. There any form of powdered sugar. We have some freeze-dried raspberry here. Look at this. Oh, oh yes. Oh, 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 yes. And then next thing, I have a little bit of fruit compote oh, that I literally good. just blended up. So this is just raspberry and strawberries that I've reduced and I'm literally just gonna drizzle it. Okay, uh, they smell fantastic, they look beautiful. I think it'd be totally rude and inappropriate we've got not taste. to taste we've got it. Got it. Okay. We've got it. So uh, this one here we've smeared with caramel. The caramel simply was we used coconut sugar, we used a little bit of vegan butter and a little bit of arrowroot to thicken it. And that was it. Um, oh my God, she's hot. Oh, she's crumbly. Oh, oh yeah. She looks great. Oh, here we go. I love the extra caramel. This is a total party own. Yeah. Salutations. Let's do it. Oh, fabulous, absolutely. Like it's quite doughy, chewy, yeah. chocolatey, caramelly. The nuts. There's nuts coming through. It's got a lot going on. It's fabulous. Absolutely. Mm. And it's lovely the whole wheat. The whole, whole wheat is really nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not light and fluffy. Uh, fab dough, that is the dough to rule them all. Again, you can use it to make a pizza dough. Mm. Makes an incredible pizza we cooked it earlier with a little bit of chive flour. Yeah. It's beautiful. Uh, makes a wonderful savory croissant. We did it with vegan cheese and some asparagus. There's a beautiful round, you can fill it with whatever you want. Beautiful uh, chocolate swirl cake, but yeah. epic. Check out Owen, he's fab, real man, baked bread. Um, any questions? Let any us know. questions, comment below. And uh, thanks for watching, sending loads of love. Thanks so much.